Back in June, which was approximately four quarantine years ago, I talked about a study that found that people tend to be turned off by extreme protests. I pointed out that, first of all, history shows us that protests are never popular, but they do still work, like civil rights. And second of all, extreme wasn't a very good adjective to use, especially when it hit the popular press, because the tactics that the researchers looked at included things like Black Lives Matter protesters chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Not like looting or engaging in actual violence, just chanting something kind of cheeky that was considered extreme. Now there's a new study done by a different group of psychologists looking at how people determine what protest tactics they find extreme, or in particular, that they find violent. They had 950 people read a news story about a protest with different groups reading different scenarios that had been changed slightly between versions. The protesters were described as being either Americans against racist policing, which is a traditionally liberal cause, or Americans against illegal immigration, a traditionally conservative cause. And their protest was described as either holding up placards and shouting slogans, some laced with profanity, blocking a nearby highway, bringing traffic to a standstill, or throwing rocks and other objects at a building. They asked the subjects to describe how violent that protest was, and then quizzed them on their feelings about whether protesters serve democracy, whether they should be arrested, and whether the government should crack down on anti-protest laws. They found that Democrats tended to see the protests as equally violent, whether the protesters were against the police or against immigration. So whether they agreed with the cause or not. Republicans, though, were significantly more likely to label the anti-police protesters as more violent than the anti-immigration protesters. They were more likely to say that the cause they didn't agree with was violent. And the Republicans who did find the cause they didn't agree with to be more violent, those people were also more likely to say that those protesters should be arrested and that the government should crack down on free speech. It's worth noting that even though Democrats didn't find conservative protesters more violent, they were more likely to say that the anti-police protesters were not violent at all compared to the protesters that they didn't agree with. So Democrats were more likely to assume nonviolence for a cause they supported, while Republicans were more likely to assume violence for the cause that they opposed. So now I kind of get that previous study. I used to think who would possibly categorize that Black Lives Matter chant as extreme? And the answer is Republicans. Uh, that fits in with a lot of previous research that tells us, by and large, conservatives tend to be afraid and they tend to see uh, violence in things that aren't violent because they are terrified um, and they base many of their beliefs on that fear. I know, I know the irony of the guys who love to call liberals snowflakes are the ones who are, in fact, terrified. But this appears to be true. Conservatives have a stronger physiological response to startling noises and graphic images. They are more likely to be scared of new experiences, and they focus more on negative images than positive images. In 2003, a meta-analysis of nearly 23,000 cases across 12 countries confirmed that several specific motives relating to the management of fear and uncertainty are associated with the ideology of political conservatism. They found that these motives were death anxiety, fear of instability, dogmatism, fear of new experiences, fear of uncertainty, need for order, rejection of other people's perspectives, which is also known as integrative complexity, and fear of threat and loss and low self-esteem. The researchers conclude the core ideology of conservatism stresses resistance to change and justification of inequality and is motivated by needs that vary situationally and dispositionally to manage uncertainty and threat. We can even see that process where fear leads to conservatism in real time. After 9-11, researchers saw a notable shift toward conservatism by Americans. 
those same researchers uh, took a bunch of subjects, both liberal and conservative, and they gave them a test where they had to judge in-group members and out-group members. This is a common psychological tool to measure conservatism. Uh, liberals tend to be unbiased uh, and judge out-group members equally to in-group members, while conservatives tend to be biased against out-group members. When the researchers first presented liberals with a description of systemic threat in the form of describing an unfair case in the criminal justice system, those liberals immediately became more conservative and started becoming more biased against outgroup members. Decades of research point to this. Conservatives are conservative because they are terrified. They're scared of looking weak, so they refuse to wear a mask. They're scared of low probability violence, so they carry guns around. And they're scared of losing their privileged position in society, so they whine uh, and cry about people who are fighting for social justice. And along with that, they're very, very scared of the people fighting injustice, which is why they think Black Lives Matter protesters are being extreme and violent, even when they're just chanting, holding signs or blocking traffic. And that's why some of them feel that it's right for them to respond to uh, those protests with actual extreme violence by actually murdering people or by even shooting them with paintballs and, and pepper spray. And that's why it's probably not worth listening to people like Claire Berlinski, uh, who are claiming that protests are going to scare conservatives into voting for Trump for a second term. They're already scared. Um, that's why they're conservatives who are finding comfort in fascism. Even if all people are doing is very politely asking for their humanity to be recognized, conservatives will be scared of that and they will turn to voting for Trump. The answer to that isn't to tell people to stop demanding their basic human rights, um, to stop asking for systemic change. It's to educate and expand the horizons of white moderates to the point that they understand and are able to empathize with people in the out group. Uh, it's to educate people like Berlinski that she is actually the problem. Uh, as Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, uh, she's the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes that he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. King knew what the science is beginning to confirm. Uh, there will never be a right time. You will never placate fascists into handing you rights. The best you might hope to do is to educate moderates that they need to stop inhibiting social progress. So I'm not saying that conservatives can't change, uh, just like you might be able to scare a liberal into supporting a war in Iraq, you may be able to educate and raise the self-esteem of a conservative enough to get them to support Black Lives Matter. That and a little empathy could change the world.